So I received the this data package that Steve's referred to that the Canadians acquired by FOIA within about 24 hours when it went live. And I reviewed it um, f on behalf of Trial Site News on request. And I was, I was really alarmed, frankly, by what I saw. It was very unusual. Um, and I, so I had an even more senior and experienced regulatory affairs professional review it. And he picked out more things, like the absence of the reprotox. Uh, and spell that out. A reproductive toxicology package that normally would be, and the genotoxicity. So genotoxicity is toxicity to the genes of the test um, uh, system. Okay, and those test system those, being the creature that you've injected it into. In this case, it's the Ames test largely. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, that's kind of uh, level one for genotoxicity analysis, um, but. And these are imperfect assays. They're not, you know, the, if, if there's one truism in, in research and non-clinical research, it's that, you know, we all say mice lie, monkeys mislead, and humans are the only things that really prove whether or not something is safe and effective is for humans. Um, and, but it's, we have to do something before we authorize, uh, approve for a material to be initially tested in humans. So what the, the alarming thing was for me was that what had been done, at least in that package, and I'm told, I spoke to Peter Marks, the director of CBER about this and about my concerns. And he told me that the Pfizer has submitted a new data package in the just last couple of weeks, and they're currently evaluating it. So I think we have to take those data um, with a little bit of a grain of salt, because they may have been updated, and we don't know what's in there. So, was this in non-human primates? Because there's a big no. It was it was done. You know, it was done in rodents. Yeah, but rodents don't have the same affinities for uh, for ACE two. So we're down in the weeds. Yeah. Um, but I just but I just the, wanted to say that, that, I just wanted to we say do it right. Agreed, and and through all of this, um, uh, I think we can all agree. Um, Tony Fauci can agree that uh, um, corners were cut in the interests of the emergency. And um, when you do that, these are, these, these are uh, processes to ensure safety that have evolved over decades. They took a risk. They took a risk and they lost, basically. So we are going to come back to this. I know you have a background in bioethics. I would point out that, all right, corners were cut. Let us all agree that we were in an emergency situation. I would have done but, the same, you know, if, if I weren't trying to the do FDA, the same thing. But the FDA, I ran across an animation, I believe it was the FDA, and the specific purpose of this animation is to say the process was accelerated, but no corners were cut. In fact, the metaphor they use is basically a road, right, and which they have straightened out the the curves, and basically, you know, it was a reduction in paperwork. So it's Brad, a cartoon. Not, yeah. it's a, it is very literally a cartoon. Yeah. So we and learned that's, that's we learned from true. the disclosures that 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 was a uh, misrepresentation. So, but it's not just a misrepresentation because the point is what is being elided here is informed consent. Basically, everybody who is getting these vaccines is part of an experiment that we are running that is actually wildly over generous of me to say, because for it to be an experiment, we would have to systematically collect data on what happened to them. To and, every patient. And in fact, our systematic system isn't so systematic. No, in it's fact, all voluntary re re reports. Voluntary reporting with stigma okay. attached and, to, to and, If you report so, something, they're going to say, no, 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 no. They'll, they'll convince you that it's not. So I just wanted to say that uh, I didn't just rely on my, my carpet cleaner story. Because right. that oh, would no, be no. a single you anecdote. It. Oh, yeah. That was just the, uh-oh. Right. Then my antenna went up. And no. then when every place I went, every single place, I talked to doctors. I said, oh, you've got 900 patients. How many of them have, you know, what's the adverse event rate, the serious adverse event rate? You know, and so doctors have a view. And I talked to paramedics. They've got a view. Right. And every, I did a survey on Nextdoor and found, you know, 3% had persistent troubling systems that, haven't gone away. Right. You know, so every single thing that I looked to verify, it was flashing so, red. So you're you're coming at it from the street level and that that has validity. And the uh, FDA doesn't okay. look at it that way. They they look at it as well, uh, you know, uh, let what me, were the, let me just, but even but let hang, me just, hang on, hang on. One, one second. The 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 VAERS system, which is the 
um, the very uh, this is voluntary vaccine adverse event, event reporting, reporting system. system. Yeah. Okay. Nobody knows about that. They're all to- told to report into VSafe. They get these text messages that only last for a few weeks or so, but nobody knows about this VARES system. And people aren't reporting in. In fact, when doctors report in, <sighs> they are told, you know, don't don't report this. This wasn't. I mean, I we've had reports reversed. From doctors, well, without their consent, without the doctor's consent. So I mean, first of all, I don't want us to work too hard. Okay, right. there is something that goes on when we get into this space where the standards that are uh, set for what constitutes evidence are absurd in the context of science and the way science actually functions. What you did is perfectly defensible. Had you concluded simply from three people in your sphere that there was a problem, that wouldn't have been. Oh, no, that I, was, yeah, absolutely not. That was an observation. It, it was an observation. A hypothesis. The exactly. hypothesis is there's a problem with these vaccines. And if I look farther, that signal's not going to disappear. It's going to continue out as far as yes, I can. Yes. And, and, and when I looked at the Veras database and I see like it's flatlined for all the, you know, 30 years that Veras has been around, and then it just spikes up. I mean, it's like a hockey stick. So maybe we should- And then it's like, how do you explain that? Maybe we should bring up that graphic. Here's this graph. And and when I saw this graph, I said, look, that, that needs to be explained. And the default is when you do a clinical trial is you have to ascribe it to the suspect should be the, uh, the vaccine, because this is what's being tested. And then you need to to show that, oh, no, 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 this was due to some other thing. Okay. And nobody's explained that. That's the thing. And nobody's even asking that's, the question, that's how the many thing. people you, have died? You're playing by the scientific rules, right? Your point is, I observed something. I What's the hypothesis? Something, and then the prediction is manifest. Right. Right. And then the question is, all right, maybe there's some other hypothesis exactly. that predicts the same thing. But if but so, But nobody's come up with it. it. Right. Exactly. Right. So they're, they're, they're using the rules of the game against science. Now, here is the graph that you were referring to. Right. These are the death reports in the VAERS system as of May 28, 2021. And what you see is there's a certain amount of death following vaccines. Some of those deaths will be just random chance. Precisely. Correct. With that, that's the them, random chance you right. see at the, uh, you see to the random left. Random chance. You have a certain number of people who have an anaphylactic reaction to something the vaccine or they just die. grown in, right? Or they just die. But the point is, we get vaccines. They have values. There's a certain cost. A certain number of people die. Right. We're adults. We get it. But then the question is, what the hell happens with the COVID vaccines there? Why is How that you explain it? so high? And so what you see there, that number I know is not up to date. The number oh, is no, no, no. They're they're way backlogged. And also, well, the, the re- current the, number is like 6,000, right? Probably somewhere around there. But they've re- they've they've actually taken nobody can explain why they've removed reports from the VARA system, because what we found is that there are reports that were put in by people and they disappear. They disappear. And then again, I'm, so this is a conservative estimate, because what about those reports that they took out that so we can't see? It's conservative. And we can't calibrate how conservative it is. Uh, correct. Words, that's no, that's a key point. It's a key okay. issue. So can I kind Please. of peck at that a little yep. bit? Um, and I wanted to make sure that I was prepared before we had this discussion today. So this morning I called some friends at FDA again and um, talked to them about the databases and the database analysis. And I wanted to just check in and make sure that I wasn't misunderstanding or misrepresenting. And uh, they used words like, um, it's chaotic, it's disorganized, they are not analyzing the data efficiently, they're understaffed, they're overwhelmed. Furthermore, all of these, whether it's vSafe or this VAERS database, which by the way, physicians are alerted and have been told for many years to use VAERS, and many of them do. Um, VAERS is self-reported. We don't have a good numerator, a good denominator. In clinical research, um, we don't do this. We get all the and, reports. And what we, we, if we're doing a structured clinical trial, we ensure that every single um, serious adverse event is carefully reported carefully evaluated, a physician has to make a judgment call as to whether it is not or is possibly or is definitely associated with drug administration. And the bias has to be anybody that, if you think about this for just a nanosecond, 
Okay. If, if our goal is to ensure safety, the bias has to be to assume that there is some association and then take the time to track it down. And, and therein lies the rub. So we have, uh, and the last point I wanted to make is that under, so I took the time to go back and reread the emergency use authorization and the most recently updated EUA, that's the acronym, for COVID um, and the guidance from the FDA. The FDA had the latitude to require that the uh, vaccine sponsors, the developers, um, implement more rigorous data capture for safety. And they elected not to. Okay. So they had the, they had the statutory authorization to do that and they made a conscious decision not to. Let me understand what you're saying. Are you talking about in order to get the EUA or are you talking about following the release? I'm talking about post, post authorization for EUA. FDA had the option, um, to elect to require more or less rigor in how the data were captured normally under an EUA. So again, you're talking about after the vaccines have been authorized to to give to the public as, data as, on what happens when it is administered to the public. That's what you're saying. Under an EUA, normally the way the statute was written, it's predominantly set up so that you no longer require written informed consent, but the sponsors are, this was the original intent but the sponsors are still required to carefully capture safety and efficacy information under EUA. You're still in an experimental product. You've just with waved, all subjects. We, you've just not waved, a voluntary you've reporting just system. Waived some of the requirements, and the current version of the EUA authorization um, provides the FDA with the latitude to choose how rigorously that has to be done. And in this case. I'm not aware that they implemented any requirements it's, for it, the sponsors it's kind of to like capture a, those data. See no evil, hear well, no evil, speak no it's, evil. I mean, it's, 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 I, I, so it's, like, me, it's almost like they didn't I don't, want, I don't to, want to, to see it. I don't want to imply intent. Right. I just want to stay with the facts. Those are the facts. So, so what so I would I'm, call I'll, this, I'll, I would say this is, that, this is one of a number of anomalies. Where fair if, enough. If you accept the... Uh, the narrative about why the EUA was granted, if you accept how we ended up here, then certain things would follow. And when they don't, there's a reason to ask the question about why, why, right? And so in this case, it seems like if you're going to release this under an EUA because it's an emergency and because we've got a real problem that basically requires us to take more risk than totally we valid. otherwise take, then what you would want to know is, well, actually, how big is the risk? And the way you would find that out is as you gave the thing to people. That's you would the look for whole a whole logic of EUA is you're basically substituting real time capture of key information for prospective capture of, of of key information. Okay, but in order to do that, you got to get the information, and it's got to be rigorous. 